Okay, for people joining this live stream, we are talking about our long in development quantum computing functionality that will be going into 12.2. Um, before, so, um, so before we start there, Itai asked me to ask you a question, which is the first section, which is unrelated. So we just want to see what you think about these two things. Provisionally, I'm I think this could go even a tiny bit longer. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about this? The the enlarged the third one feels a bit heavy. So perhaps a bit smaller. Yeah, I think it could go like twenty percent smaller or something. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be distinctly not a, 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 a pure dot. Right. Okay. Okay. So the agenda is separated into, uh, so at the end we have all the symbols. So there are 18 new symbols and we have a guide page and a tutorial. So these are all things we could look at. Great. And then th there are a couple of global questions I have there, which is the name. We have been doubting about quantum computing or just quantum. Actually, we have both names in different places. And then how to release it, whether it's a built-in packlet, sorry, built-in built package, built-in packlet, or something in the packlet repo. How many, um, how many new functions does it have? 18 right now. How general do we think it is? In do my opinion, a, in, yeah. I, mean, I mean, we should all express our opinions, but I think, I think it, this is more quantum computing at the moment than, than quantum. And for example, yeah. if you see the main object, quantum discrete state, it talks about QDs and, and the terminology is very quantum computing like, I think. Yes, that's what okay. I think too. Jonathan, what do you think? Uh, I, I agree, although, I mean, it's only, the, the terminology is only quantum computing like because we kind of meant it to be that way. I mean, the, the functionality is general enough that it can apply to any sort of finite dimensional quantum system. Um, it's just a question of whether we well, want to add Right, but I mean, what would be the bridge? What would be the first kinds of uh, finite dimensional quantum systems to which it might apply? Things in chemistry, for example? I, I doubt it. Um, I mean, m m this, is the th this is the thing, right? That most of the finite dimensional quantum systems people care about are the ones in quantum information theory. Well, in, in your version of the world. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, sure that, I'm not sure that's generally true. I mean, I, you know, I don't really know what other... Um, I don't know. My, my, Michael might have a comment, but uh, my, my experience has been that sort of people in quantum chemistry mostly care about infinite dimensional cases. I agree. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, guys, the, if we're doing guide page stuff, for goodness sake, don't have things that wrap lines. Um, uh, but unfortunately, these are hard to describe otherwise. Right, and, and long names. Okay, well, let's get a sense of what's here. Okay, that doesn't seem like an operation. Quantum discrete state is not an operation. Right. Basic objects, right. Yeah. basic operations, then comes, um, in fact, they're, they're mostly objects except things like quantum distance or quantum partial trace. Mm -hmm. So what are, quantum partial trace, how do those, what is this? I mean, is this state manipulation or something? What is quantum partial trace? How would you characterize it? I think this should be called basic objects. Yep. And that goes down quantum measurement operator, measurement outcome, tensor product. As far as tensor product, well, I mean, state, operations is that right statement state manipulation um, except that one can also perform uh, tensor products and things over operators and measurements it's not it's okay. not just it's object what about the other ones here uh those are those except for quantum distance i believe they all apply to both the states and operators okay so what should we call these basic operations uh, i think partial 
partial trace only works for states. Okay. All right. So, but what kind of a thing is this as compared to that, that that's a if if true that's a limitation. If we can take tensor products of operators, we should be able to take partial traces of operators. All right. Can I just get a sense of what's here? Okay. So, um, oh, okay. And should I be looking also at the where's the tutorial? Where, where should I look to try and understand what's going on? So it's in the in the tutorial. Um... Yeah, in the tutorial directory, there is a quantum computing technique. <coughs> There's a Stephen Wolfram tutorial. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> I wonder what that is. Uh, actually, right now, the tutorial is like uh, mostly applications. I haven't uh, explained like each function yet in the tutorial. But it needs a bit of introduction, but I think it's from the point of view of quantum computing, it looks quite nice with the main examples in the area. And the... Okay, quantum discrete state. So if I take this as an example, just so to try to understand something. Um, someone on our live stream is asking whether this, what type of quantum computer, on what type of quantum computer can this be executed? Yeah, well, that's the life of quantum computing. I don't know whether we've looked at any of this API stuff. I mean, as the years go by, that just stuff seems just more and more fictional. But I don't know whether we've looked at anything there. Have we? Well, there's quantum compile. There's a function we have called that. I don't think it has been implemented yet, but it's in the works. I mean, you guys, it's kind of a joke, right? It, because it's like, that's the thing that to implement that. Oh, I see, I see. Into, into particular operators for particular kinds of particular technologies and so on, right? Right, right. I mean, I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know if it's advanced in the last couple of months, but I mean, when Ruhi and I were looking at this back in whenever it was March, uh, we had a sort of prototype working, but it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't cleaned up and, and fully implemented. What's the status? Can somebody speak to that? Needs about like three more weeks of work, I guess. Okay, and and also, do we have a? Do we do we know what the targets are for different technologies? No, no. We mostly based it off of the universal Q compile package that was published, I think. Okay. Well, it seems like this is an important thing to have. So, I mean, is this something for to feed, to to work on? Uh, yes, probably. Okay, the, where is, so, okay, Jose, what, what should happen here? Um, well, this was not planned. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this was not planned for our first release. If, if, if the No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary, but it's desirable. And right. since the whole thing is packed and updatable, we might as well do that. Well, that, I mean, I would like to get that clear, how we are going to release this. If, if we want it in 12.2, uh, I mean, if we have it in 12.2 as part of system, it's no. a bit more than, than what we it's, wanted. It, it, no, no, we're not going to do that. It's right. It's, I mean, you know, we should have released this in the packet form years ago, but we didn't. But let's do that now. And I think, I think it, it should be a package just like, you know, Unity Link or any of these other things as a package. That's what I think. So, so I, I mean, if, if we have it as a package, the, 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 the problematic thing with packages is that every single example will need these needs at the beginning, which is a bit. I thought we had a way to deal with that. I, I thought we had a way to deal with that in documentation. I don't think so. I, mean, I, I thought packages... that we had a way that, that in the click to copy that it automatically included those. I see. Okay. Th then I would have to. to, to well, check. okay. The, the... 
because the, the, the alternative is also if, if we put it in the packlet repo, then it can be downloaded from there and it goes directly as a packlet into system functionality, which would be nice. No, that. that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. And I, I hate that pattern as well. I think that pattern is just going to cause people to have these ridiculous towers of dependencies that is exactly what we're trying to avoid. I see. Right. I actually think that's a, I mean, I actually really don't like these things, these packets that install into the system. How could that possibly end well? Right. You either depend on it or you don't. If you depend on it, you know, then you've got some whole dependency throat clearing thing you've got to do at the beginning. It's not good. Mm -hmm. How ready? I mean, you know, we've been hashing this out for multiple years here. How ready is this to go into system if we decided to put it there? Well, it would have to be certainly experimental. Um, sure. Hmm. That's okay. I mean, do we think from a design point of view, do we think we fully work this through? My worry is the future extension to more general quantum mechanics. That's something that I'm still not sure this will scale well in that direction. And, and to have something in the system, it would be nice if that. Okay, um, Michael, your comments here, like quantum basis, for example. Seems a slightly odd thing to me, honestly. I mean, we want the basis outside of quantum. We want the basis for L2 or maybe Rigged, Hilbert space or whatever. So what's your point? A little bit what, what Jose just said, like what is the connection say to the Hermite polynomials? They form a basis. Yeah. So um, one thing that may be worth mentioning, so at least when we, when we first started designing this, it was designed, these were designed to be system symbols. Um, obviously the scope has changed since then, but the reason why we chose to use phrases like quantum discrete state, quantum discrete operator, as opposed to quantum state, quantum operator, was specifically to avoid this, you know, the situation of possible collision with more general quantum mechanics, because then everyone knows that we're dealing with the, you know, the, the discrete finite dimensional case. Um, okay, let's look at the different op possibilities, okay? So we think in terms of, of um, quality of the development that's here, this could be an experimental system function, yes or no? It's very difficult to decide. I, I, think, I think it could, I, th I think it could. Okay. Well, then maybe it should be. I mean, I, I don't think that we're going to... Okay, Jonathan, you're, when you use this in the quantum to multi-way system and so on stuff, yep. um, what does that look like? I mean, so... so what, what do you mean? Well... Okay, hold on. I'm... I'm Let's let's go on a little bit, looking at some more details, and then let's loop back to this question. I mean, I'm I'm sort of leaning, given your comments about, um, I mean, eighteen symbols is not that bad. The the, okay, uh, uh, the first design, the first serious design meeting we had about this last, well, uh, sorry, about, yeah, you know, last year. Um, you said something to the effect of quantum mechanics has been around for a hundred years. Maybe we should just bite the bullet and have a load of quantum symbols. Yeah. That I remember saying something along those lines. Right. And yes, I mean, and that was, I was going to repeat that actually here. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but my, my point was that, I mean, although we dropped that convention, at least when I was initially designing things, the, I, I felt like having the discrete descriptor there was kind of our get out clause. Right. And then if we want to have a more general, you know, quantum state, quantum operator function that reduces the quantum discrete state in the, in the, in the discrete case, then we yeah. can do that. Well, so what, what do we not have discrete in? We have quantum discrete basis. We don't have quantum discrete basis there. Right, right. Um, 
and I see, so again, a, you know, a couple of things have been changed. So I, I remember in the version I implemented quantum, what's now called quantum measurement operator was called quantum discrete measurement and things. So it seems that we, we've dropped the conventions a bit, but. Well, but they may be extendable anyway, so. Sure, yeah, I, I, in which case we should, we should drop the discrete from state and operator. No, we shouldn't because we don't know if they're generalizable yet. But why would why would measurements be generalizable but operators not? But you know, I don't, know. I don't know. Why did we drop the discrete measurement? Why did we drop the discrete word there? Yeah, but that wasn't my decision. Well, but but somebody yeah. can speak to it. I'm not sure why that happened. Uh, we should put it back though, for sure. Well, okay. So, which of these? I mean, tensor product is that discrete? Well, I, I mean, everything is discrete, right? So, if we if we really want to be protected, we should we should have everything have the you know have a discrete descriptor. Um. If we did that, by the way, we, I mean, we could shorten a bunch of these descriptions. We don't have to say discrete, discrete, discrete all over the place. Um, <coughs> I mean, I do think quantum discrete evolution would be better than quantum evolution. Quantum evolution is a pretty general concept. Right. Oh, I mean, say, same with bases and everything. All right, what do you think, Jose, Michael, if we add discrete here and we say, you know, quantum discrete everything here um, and put it in system? Michael? I, I haven't looked so much at it, so I cannot give a, like, like what, what I see right now, like my first thing would be virtually every real life evolution is Lindbladian and not Hamiltonian. That's beyond my reading level. Explain. The, uh, like uh, real life is not uh, unitary because we have coupling to the environment, so okay, we get okay. uh, loss, losses. Yeah, right. I understand that. But although, do people really take that into account? Yes. Really? How? Yes. How do they know enough about the environment to do it? You don't have to. That's the that's the main spirit of the Krauss-Lindblad theorem. You have you know the theoretical structure it can have, so that it is positive trace. What epoch in the development of quantum mechanics does that come from? 1971, 72, Davis. OK. Might be after my time in some sense. I mean, but, but seriously, I mean, when people do random quantum chemistry things, are they doing that? Are they, when they're doing quantum computing, are they doing that? I think so. Really? Yeah, because like they do it in a lab. So the, if they have a iron representation, uh, it couples to, to the infrared field. Well, I know it does, but do they actually account for that? I mean, yeah, yeah. that's the main. This is how otherwise do you get decoherence, which is the deal breaker for. I understand for, for that, but I thought they didn't get the. I mean, and when people do standard, you know, oh, let's study this teleportation protocol, they're not including decoherence. But this is a different story, I feel. What, what's not, a different story? Uh, uh, teleportation. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Just physics moment here. What is the form of this? The, so this coupling leads to, we normally have a unitary operator right. that represents the evolution. What, yes. what happens in this case? In, in your Lindblad case, what does it look like? Does it still a unitary operator? Or is no, it it's not only unitary. Okay, and what is the form of the correction to the unitary piece? Uh, double commutators with so-called Krauss operators. And they're commutators with what? With what operators? With the density matrix. So normally you have a von Neumann-like version of a Liouville equation. So yeah. rho, pra, rho, rho dot equal h rho times i, yep. and then you yep. get uh, double commutators with, 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 with operators you know the general form of. 
and those operators represent I mean, those operators have certain, I mean, it's like an operator product expansion or something where you're looking at the first order terms. No, this is actually exact. You can show every, every like in general, you would include the environment and then you trace the environment out. And after doing this, you know how the thing must look like. But so, so what does that mean in terms of, I mean, so, so what's the minimal case of this? I mean, I have some random... The minimum case is you have a quantum particle in air and it decoheres. And then you get such P comma P comma rho and X comma X comma rho terms. And how quickly does it decohere? 10 to the minus 20, 10 to the minus 24 seconds. What for... sets that time scale? Uh, uh, the scattering events uh, around it. But so something must know something about that scattering in order to set that time scale. I mean, these yes. commutators must have a scale. No, they're, 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 they're prefactors. They're, they're explicit dimensional prefactors. So what's, the, what's the, So there's some constant of nature that is the decoherence time. No, no, it's not a constant of nature. It depends on the environment. Okay, but I mean, in, in our, okay, it's like standard temperature and pressure, standard decoherence time. Is that right? No, 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 that's really a standard. It depends on all kinds of things. Well, I understand that, but okay. but 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 in what you're saying is okay. What you're saying is that in this, so the point you're making is the density matrix winds up being some horribly off-diagonal, messy thing in the beginning. Okay, and, and in then the it end, quickly diagonalizes de facto. I didn't know there was an actual formalism that did that. I'm obviously out of date. Um, um, well, hang on, M Michael. So very naive question. Um, for a given time, yeah. isn't the, the, the Lindbladian, isn't that just a quantum channel? Yes. So we can represent it in this framework. We have okay, I was just reading this. Uh, where, where I would expect, like in the usage message of quantum evolution, to be a quantum Hamiltonian or Lindbladian. Right, right. So, I mean, this is an this is an argument for introducing, a, 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 you know, in addition to quantum Hamiltonian, one that includes the you know the Lindblad master equation or something. Um, but that's not out of the scope of the current framework, as at least as far as I understand it. Yes, but the code is not there yet. There's nothing at all about quantum channel. Okay, so that's part of the to-do list. Uh, hang on, I'm... Ruhi, am I going insane? Didn't we prototype Quantum Channel? We did, but again, it wasn't incorporated into the main package. It's in the same uh, realm as Quantum Compile. Right, but we have code for it. I mean, we have code that does something. Yeah, uh, yeah, we do. Okay, so then in, in the workflow, who, who should work on that code? Ruhi, Tafik, who's, who should work on that code? I can I can work on quantum channel and quantum compile and put it into the package since it was my code initially. Okay. All right. Okay. Is there a way to get a stub of those things in there very quickly that could be subsequently packed updated? At this point, I don't think so because they worked with the version of the package that didn't have quantum basis in it. So it will take a while. Okay. Um, right, right. We are really short on time here now. With I, I understand that, so we won't get those things in immediately. Um, why don't I hear when people study, like you know, the D-wave spin glass computery thing? Why haven't I mean, what what is the coefficient of this extra sort of commutator term? What's it called, Michael? Something with decoherence, I would assume. But it doesn't have a standard name. I mean, no, it's not no, like... No, no, that I know. I mean, it's like the, like the you know... But, I mean, it, it is... So you're saying it's a single scalar thing that determines, essentially, the progressive diagonalization of the density matrix. Yeah, more or less. It's slightly and it naive, happens but exponentially. Yes. This is a good question i'm i don't think so i think you can construct models where it happens algebraically okay 
But I don't know why. I mean, in the there's description, this, this su me. sudden entanglement, death, and all the things. So it can e even happen in finite time to zero. It doesn't have to happen exponentially. Okay, but this doesn't sound like a completely determined algebraic form. If if you can have all these different cases. No, it's a differential equation. I understand that. I understand that. But it's but it's got. But you described it as a bunch of double commutators, not something where there's an arbitrary function in that. Anyway, we're, we're no, no, no. Of, Rho, rho, rho dot equal a double commutator. You have no idea what's the solution of this differential equation. If you have random gunk in the commutator. Yes. Some operator, which you, exactly. is an undefined. Okay, so we've got an undefined operator that represents the environment, which right. is, you know, has some master equation-y type thing. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. This is unsurprising, right. Yes, if I'd known about this in the 70s, I would have ignored it on the grounds of just... Obviously, something like that has to be true, but the question is, what's the form of that operator? And this is what I think Krauss' contribution is, that there, there's, there's not too much choice. Okay, that's interesting. Huh. I wonder, Jonathan, do you know about this stuff? Uh, I, so I know about the about the, the semi-group formalism, which I think is the way that it's described mathematically. I don't really understand the physics, but the, uh, yeah. I know about Limbloodians in the sense that they are just sort of one parameter families of quantum channels, I think. So, so to what extent is there a conceptual link between this and kind of like the canonical ensemble in statistical mechanics where, where you say sort of everything has to have that distribution, except it doesn't in reality? It, 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 it is the equation that describes the evolution of the canonical ensemble. Uh, ensemble. Well, I understand, but, but, but so, right. <clears throat> okay, okay. So I understand how that works in classical statistical mechanics. And the answer is that it's a big mess, right? If you make certain assumptions about two body interactions and this and that and the other, you get some particular hierarchy of equations, but you really don't know. Away. Yeah, right. The BBGKY hierarchy and all that kind of stuff. The, but, but that isn't very determined. The form is determined, but the details, you know, if you have something which has only six body interactions or something, you can get all kinds of weird stuff going on. Okay, so that, that, that's about, the, yeah, okay, fine. That's where, where I suspect all of those parameters are unknown, basically. But there's probably some way of doing something that is like the BGKY hierarchy or like the operator product expansion that identifies what class of terms can occur. Okay, let me put something in the chat and go to equation 49 on page 20. Okay, then we're going to get back from our physics moment. <laughs> and um, uh, equation 49. On page 20. Uh, page 20. Good. Okay. So that's a very concrete one. You see kind of like there is the kinetic term and then there's the double commutator that decoheres. Okay, fine. Well, it's interesting that it's as explicit as that. But I mean, this is just some random approximation. Right? It I'm is sure concrete case, order. yes, yes, yes. There are certainly higher order terms. N n n yes and no. There are higher order terms for each concrete model, but the structure has no higher order terms. Like, the, uh, go back to uh, 42. So, so, so you're, you're arguing that like the potential in the Schrodinger equation, that the form, the potential may be unknown, but the way that it appears in the Schrodinger exactly. equation. Exactly. Like, like the, the x is, is, is an approximation. Go back to the equation 42. Or, or 43, you see, it must have this shape. End of story. Okay, okay. Well, that's interesting. You could, if you have more, then you get superluminal information and all other things. Can this be done for the Dirac equation as well? Don't know. always a test with these relativistic things of yeah. whether, um, okay. Well, that's interesting. All right, cool. Well, that was a useful thing to learn. All right, let's come back to making decisions here.
Yeah, sorry, but oh. just, just on a formalistic level, I, uh, the, the point I was making was that, you know, just like quantum evolution basically takes, you know, a state or an operator or something and turns it into a, a one parameter family of states and operators obeying some function, um, we can do a similar thing for the Limbladian, right? Because we it, it's what you have is just, where, uh, you know, a, a, a family of density matrices that are determined by this one parameter semi-group. Semi and if you specify the semi-group, then right. you're, you're done. I see. So it, it wouldn't actually I mean, require any, any significant code modification. Okay, at a mathematical level, I get it. I mean, it's like, let the world be described as semi-group and everything that happens within it. The world is not a stage, it's a semi-group. Never mind, I'm just being silly. But but I mean, it, it, yeah, right. Okay, mathematically, I understand. The... Um, Okay. All right. So let's let's um. So okay, decision. If we if we say quantum discrete for everything here, and we put it in experimental system context, um. Seems okay to me. I mean, unless people, yeah, it seems okay. It seems like it's been developed enough that we can do that. What do you mean by experimental synth? I just put, no, no, I didn't mean experimental context. I just mean in the system context, tagged as experimental. Mm -hmm. I mean, my main concern here is about the time we have to finish because it's, we are so close. And, and there I, are... I'm, I'm aware, but I mean, so, so uh, all we're doing is we're adding the word discrete to each of these quantum things. That's a nuisance, but it's something I think we can do. And flowing that through and getting it out and it is a packlet updatable thing, right? Um, yes, it, it can be made, yes. But uh, so what about the idea of the packlet repo? So no, how it, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because it's undocumentable. We don't have a mechanism for documenting that yet. I mean, how would you do it? And where would you put the documentation? Will it be in the generic website documentation? If so, where? We don't have a mechanism for it yet. Right. I mean, it is that the, the original idea was to treat this as somehow the first example of, of the packet repo. I think yeah, was... but the packet repo isn't ready. Right, right. So I think, you know, it's like, what are we going to do? We've either got to, we've either got to build that out, which we can't do, right, in the time available, or we've got to put this as an experimental set of system functions, which is where they're going to go anyway in the end. Right. So why not just do that? I, I think the, the other possibility that was discussed was having it be in the repo having it be in the packet repository and then expose everything through WFR. Oh, that's a big pain in the neck. <laughs> right. I, I, I think you've gotten to the point where I think this is well shaken down enough that, you know, having it be an ex you know, set of experimental system functions is okay. But sorry, sorry what Jonathan just said might be not so bad as this would be do for Wayne and it works, I think, pretty well. Yes, but but I, I agree, but this is a I agree, but I think this is more off on a prong. Right? It's like it's design. We've been shaking down this design for like four years or something. Right? This is not like a just came off the boat type design. And I also don't think, I mean, the, the Wayne stuff is mostly stuff that, you know, maybe, you know, is a bit too specific for the, system. The difference is it's one of, independent one of. Uh, here is a set that belongs together. I feel like that's a big difference. Well, yes. Right. Look, I think we should add the discrete word to this and we should make it experimental system functions. Okay, unless anybody violently objects to that, I think that's where we should go with this. And I think it's useful for people to, you know, to feel that there's a, a quantum framework that is built in so that they can expect that it will be maintained. And, uh, you know, if they write, if they put things in their papers that are these, you know, representations of quantum circuits that will go on working. So long as we think there isn't a problem with that, I say we go ahead and do this. Will go there on. be a convenient input form? for typing in cats and paws? 
Anybody want to comment on that? Well, I mean, it's not that inconvenient. Also, quantum discrete state is set up so that, you know, if you just give it a, a vector, it will, it will do the bras and cats for you. I mean, I can, can I take a bra and cat and edit it? Uh, yes. Yes. Well, let, let okay. me let me see that work. Wait, wait a second. So if I say, um, okay, then what happens? Now I go in here and I change that to 55. Yeah, it works just fine. And evaluate uh, it and it comes back. Okay, good. Nice. All right. But, but also, I mean, in, in most practical cases, I suspect you wouldn't, I mean, unless you're kind of manipulating bases and I mean, unless you're explicitly carving your own bases, you shouldn't need to modify bras and cats. You should. But just... by the way, by the way, on the guide page, it should mention bra and cat, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it? How would we describe them? Is it in basic objects? Yeah, probably. Can can I dot a bra with a cat? Guys, I mean, listen. This yeah, is not fully. Full. Not part of this framework. That they're, they're they're general symbols, right? Yeah, they have nothing to do with this framework. They just happen to be used as a convenient representation for bases in this framework. Yes, I understand. So, I mean, I think that that we should say on the guide page. It's what we do on a guide page, and we should also look at the documentation for bra and cat and make sure that it's not crazy. What should we call and, and it? Sorry, and what's inside can be more complex, like if I think on angular momentum states. So I could have say J, L, and S in the in the bar. Let's try it. Nice. Looks like it. Nice. Okay, but bra has no documentation page. So it should probably, well, I don't know what the circle times doesn't have a documentation page either, but this one, actually, that's an interesting point that this, but circle times doesn't take, no, yeah, it does actually. Yeah. So bra should have a documentation page. Huh? Okay. So it should have one like circle times. Does that make sense to people? Yep. Simply just, did, did yeah. you understand people? Yeah. 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 But Brian Kate right now are notational devices for us, not, not semantic. I understand. So what should we say in the guide page? Basic notation or something. Underlying notation for quantum states. What should we say? So right now we are using it, I think, Jonathan, in terms of for the basis vectors, right? Rather than the general. Yeah, exactly, right. So, so, so a quantum discrete state is just an association that maps basis vectors onto amplitudes. And then the basis vectors by default are formatted with, with cats. OK, well, so what should we say in the guide page? So yeah, I mean, symbolic notation for quantum uh, basis state, something like that. quantum basis names yeah okay mm -hmm. symbolic notation for names of quantum basis states is that right it still feels a little weird with putting this in the guide i mean like we don't have we don't have links off to like circle times and things in the theorem proving guide page i mean maybe we should but that seems we probably should okay should we have circle times on this guide page as well I think that's a that's a agenda item. Okay. Exactly. All right. Actually, I've got an idea. Let's put in this thing. Let's put something that says. Um, quantum notation. And then put this here. Okay. So then, okay. Let's look at the agenda. Um, 
Okay. All right, design. So these are two relatively minor points, but there are some places in which SQL times is used. And I think we should use that directly tensor product. How is tensor product displayed? Exactly in the same way. With a circle times. Is it yeah. its own circle times that has a built-in meaning? Yes. So you can you can actually use it with arrays and, and... so wait a minute. if I if I look at tensor product. Didn't we have it? Doesn't it have its own glyph? It, it, it does. Tensor product has its, its own. I mean, it looks very similar. I think it's oh, okay. Size. Fine. I see. Okay. And this is operational. So with symbolic objects, it will stay. It would be nice animated. if you actually gave an example that used the circle times here. I see it's in output, but but yes, it can be done in input too. So I mean, if I take this, then what you're saying is. What is the notation? What, what's it called? It's but, Cape T star. Yeah, or tensor product, yeah. Huh. <clears throat> wow, that's pretty cool, actually. Well, yes, I would think we should use this. But 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 it's here it's standing for quantum tensor product, isn't it? So quantum Do, tensor product takes a list of quantum elements and then it returns the, not, the notational brass and cats. Right. So, so, so that, that thing on the left-hand side of the association is a circle times for the same reason that the bras and cats are bras and cats, right? That they're just names. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so it doesn't actually have a semantic meaning as a tensor product. The, that circle times doesn't, uh, but obviously quantum tensor product does. And we discussed early on potentially kind of overriding tensor product so that if you if you give it a collection of quantum objects, it will do yeah. the quantum tensor product. I think this seems a bit dangerous. I mean, you know, using circle times is purely notational. Okay. I mean, I, I don't know. It, can we make it actually work? The bras and cats don't mean anything, and there's no operation, if I'm correct, other than that they're, they're used only for naming. Yeah, right, right. There's nothing I can do with them as such. Well, the, the, mean, thing, can... the thing you can do, they don't have meaning unless they are in a quantum discrete state, right? If they're just yeah. basis names, then you can't do anything with them, which is what they are here. Okay. Okay. Damn, damn. All right. So, so, now I have a question, so now I have a question to what Jonathan just said. So you said bars and cats have only meaning in a basis. But but every state is a bra. Right, right, sure. So, okay, I mean, good. No, no, of course, right. So so every every QDS can be interpreted as a bra or a cat. Or, yeah, of course. Okay, but, good. But, but, yeah, the, 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 the point is that um, you, in addition to just knowing the amplitudes, you want to know what the individual basis elements are called. And the point is that the, the, the default naming convention is to use cats and yeah. circle. Okay, so I think we should say symbolic notation I would just say for quantum states and leave it at that. And then say here on the next line, if that's the only other thing we've got. Um, and, and by the way, documentationally, we should actually have a picture of a bra here. Um, in other words, something like. like this. Okay, so circle time and then the corresponding thing for cat. And then say symbolic notation for uh, quantum tensor products, tensor. Is there any other notation that we're using? Uh, there is an angle bracket, but I'm not sure. Maybe I will change it in the future. Well, what, what is that for? That's for expectation values? 
uh, it's to collect a measurement result. So for example, the first measurement I get zero and the second measurement I get one and I collect together into an angle bracket. The reason I use it because I cannot use less. Somehow uh, the categorical distribution framework that I've been using interpret it differently. If well, I then use we less. Need to understand that. We need to understand that. Okay, so what you're saying is when you get out a list of results, what you want is a categorical distribution with certain probabilities for certain categorical outcomes. And how would you like to represent that? In other words, what were you trying to do? Uh-huh. So uh, what I'm trying to do is to make a single category contains multiple numbers. For example, uh, like two measurements have one zero and one I zero is a single I understand. Okay. So the issue is, well, okay, so we should ask the statistics people how to do that. I understand because categorical distribution is using lists to represent something different. Yes. But you don't want to use angle brackets here because, because the thing you're looking at is, you know, specifically uh, um, yeah, um, you know, I'm about to run out of time, but, but we really have to, we'll have to continue this because, because we, we, you know, we need to get this in. Look, I think we made a decision. It's going to be quantum discrete star. It's going to be part of experimental part of system context. Um, I don't think this is right with this angle bracket thing, but we need to ask the people who did categorical distribution how to do this, if there is a way. Um, that's a nasty problem, stupid problem with categorical distribution, design mistake, I think. Um, Okay, can, can somebody make sure to ask? Can we deal with that, please? Yes, we will. Okay, all right. I, I'm going to have to go in a second here. Um, no use of undefined and indeterminate versus missing quantum. Yeah, this is very minor. It, it just, there are some places in which I think we should, I mean, the use of undefined seems. No, it seems wrong. I mean, we, we don't even have, is there even a symbol called undefined? Yes, it's used in, in logic statements and conditional expressions, etc. So if, if, if the result is a Boolean, undefined seems okay. But if it's a number, it, I think... No, it, definitely not. What, right. what is this case? Let's see. What so is this, this, is, this is measuring an entanglement. But like a particular entanglement measure, for example, concurrence is only defined for a certain case. So if we input a different state that is uh, that's not pro proper, then it will return undefined. That's okay. So there are two possibilities: either it's missing or it's a failure object. If it's if it represents a if if it is simply something that could otherwise be a one, something like that, I think it should be a missing with some tag that says what, what some whatever it is. I, I don't know what, what the right tag is, but something about undefined. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, let's be practical here. This is gonna take a little bit more time because we've got to, you but, know- but, but Why doesn't it stay unevaluated? That could be too. I mean, if there's an error. This will generate error. a message. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, right now it doesn't generate a message, but it, it could as well. If I have a quantum state of two particles and I ask if the third and the fourth are entangled, I don't expect undefined or flavor of it. I expect to do nothing. Mm. We could do that too, okay. yeah. Sounds, sounds reasonable to me. By the way, I don't know what our convention is for whether we have this on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Yes. That, that, that we should look for that. I, I'm not sure which what we've done in other places. Um, I it, okay. I think brackets it on the right-hand side. Okay. All right. Fine. We're not going to bracket the bracket. I think we can get away with not bracketing the bracket. Um, 
by the way, sorry, very mundane question. Uh, do we have error messages? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, no, not complete, but but yes, some functions do have. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, and, okay. By the way, on the categorical distribution thing, is there a reason why we moved away from using empirical distribution? Um, yeah, so um, I think the reason was it's hard to use when I want to do like multiple qubit measurement and something like that. And in, in quantum computer, usually we don't really care about uh, the average or things like that, only like individual probabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By the way, do... on the guide page, we should list categorical distribution somewhere and other things that are used. And that's the point of guide pages, right? There's nothing else that's entrained into this. Um, okay, listen, practical thing. I have to go to this other meeting. We need to continue this at some point here. Um, I see there's a gap on my calendar at in, oh gosh, how many hours is it? Uh, two and a half hours. Um, so if anybody's available to continue it then, I'd be happy to do it then. Um, um, to okay. think that must be exactly. for me, right? Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I can. Okay. I won't be able to either. I have another. Meeting. Okay. Well, then, then we'll get Emma to set something else up in the next couple of days. Okay. We, we need to continue this and finally get this to completion. Um, but okay. why don't you go ahead and go, you know, start making the change to quantum discrete and so on. And I think that will get us really close, but we're still going to have to review the documentation for things and so on. Make sense? Yep. Okay, and I will commit these changes back to the system. Um, all right, this is very good, guys. I mean, it's just, uh, it's been a long road. Mm -hmm. Let's, um, uh, and I look forward to really digging into Tafik's documentation stuff. Um, all right, well, you, you guys can keep going. I, I'm, I, just, I just have to go, so I don't know how you want to do this, but, um, okay. I, I, I don't think we need. Okay. All right. See you guys soon. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay.